hello everybody. My name is Elizabeth and I'm with TheDailyCourse.com and right now I'm chilling with John from Second Hands Grenade. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. How are All you? Right. I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. I'm going to ask a little bit questions about the name of your, uh, I wouldn't want to say band, but just how did you come about with coming with Second Hands Grenade? I mean, a lot of solo artists go about with just using their name, like John Mayer and stuff, and yeah. you decided to go with Second Hands Grenade. So can you kind of explain that? Yeah, well, um, I mean, uh, like first and foremost, I didn't want to kind of throw myself into that pool of people because that's really not the type of music that I'm interested in making. Um, I mean, uh, I don't know. I, I'm more of a rock guy by nature, and I, I you know, I, I grew up listening to rock. I, I listen to rock now, and, and I write rock songs, and, and, and I like to, you know, even though I'm acoustic, I don't like to consider myself as being kind of like that cliche singer-songwriter, you know, sappy love songs. Like my, my songs aren't sappy love songs. Most of them are like. Like, like extremely depressing, <laughs> like, and uh, you know, it's it, it's all you know. I don't know. I'm am just not into that, you know, whole genre of music. Like you know, putting myself into that, and so um, so I, I want to be considered a band. And I'm eventually going to be taking on a band as well, for for certain songs. Like my my tour is going to be uh, kind of mixed up, and some songs I'll have solo, some songs I'll have with a band, some I'll be playing piano, and just kind of mix it up a little. So uh, you know, I want to leave it open definitely, and. Uh, as for my name, I don't know. I, I want to figure, you know, I, I want to find something that would be original. I want to find something that uh, would actually mean something to me and uh, uh, hopefully mean something to my fans. And I mean, I just kind of came up with it. I mean, it's, it's the most simple concept that you could, you know, um, come up with. I mean, I, I, I sing really, you know, simple songs about really, you know, normal situations. and. Uh, and then uh, I use them, you know, I mean, I, I don't really use them to serenade any, you know, anybody, but I, I write them about somebody. And then I, uh, you know, go out and I, I play them for all my fans. So I mean, in turn, I'm kind of giving a secondhand serenade. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, it's simple. There's not much to it. You're not going to find, like, some special, like, amazing meaning behind it, but it's, but it's yeah, it's straightforward. How do you think it's important to pick that right name? Because, I mean, there's a lot of bands out there that... I'm not going to name any bands, but they have some kind of weird names or some quirky names, and uh... well, a lot of <laughs> some <laughs> names are like you know made by a dare or like yeah. a get, you know, or like a you know just like a pot, of, you know. And so, um, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of take it a little more seriously. Some bands kind of want to come up with something that they think will be you know interesting or like catch somebody's ear, but it'll really kind of like hinder them in the end. And so, I don't know. I mean, to each his own. Like I, I'm all all about you know a band you know choosing their name uh, for the reason they want to choose their name. And so, um, but but I definitely think you know having some meaning behind it, like uh, directly related to what you're doing, is always a plus. You went through different, I guess, musical experiences. You went from playing, I guess, like ska punk to rock to hardcore, and now you're playing acoustically. Like, how'd you come about doing that? <laughs> Well, I mean, I've always I, I've always listened to like lots of different types of music, and I mean, when I started, I was you know, like you said, I was in a big ska phase. I was big into like Mad Caddies and like Safe Ferris and all these different like you know uh, ska bands, and and, uh, and I mean that's what I did. I played bass at that time, and I was like all about like the kind of like you know walking bass lines, and it was just like fun. And so uh, I did that for like about a year, and and uh, I was just kind of experimenting. I mean, I listened to a lot of that that kind of like ska punk at that time, and I got into hardcore through like the middle of like high school so I played in a hardcore band for a little while and um, and yeah I don't know I mean it just my, my taste evolved over time and you know I kind of go back and forth with things but but I'm just a big fan of music and so I mean you know playing music in general was was what I wanted to do didn't really matter what it was so how do you think the music industry has changed over the years uh, but I think uh, you know I, I think it's changed a whole bunch I think a lot of people weren't ready for it ie major labels they, they're not I, I don't know if uh, you know I think it's great I think how it's changed is really 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 in the artists favor and uh, and that's a great thing and I mean you know like a lot of people aren't really ready for it I mean um, it just kind of has to evolve a little bit I mean SoundScan still doesn't even um, uh, you know consider like individual song sales as being part of their calculations which is like I mean, that can, you know, amount to, like, half the album sales. And so, I mean, there's so many things that, you know, in this whole, like, digital world that, you know, we haven't figured out yet and figured out how to, like, you know, kind of make it all work. But it's it's really, really great for the artists, and it's really, uh, you know, it's making it easier for the kids out there to, 
you know, hear more bands or, or to get music or, you know, just to, you know, be around it, so. So you definitely think the internet has played a huge role in the music huge, industry? Huge, huge. Pro pro probably, yeah, probably one of the biggest, like, um, you know, things that's happened uh, since, like, I don't, I don't know. I, I, think, I think it's one of the biggest things that has happened since, like, ever honestly i mean it, like promotion wise it's it's this viral like uh you know network that just never ends i mean uh, almost you know uh, i don't even know how many people but like it's an endless number of people that are like plugged in like you know constantly there and uh i don't know i think it's uh i think it's amazing a kid can go on myspace and you know throw their songs up and automatically i mean you know how, however many are in the myspace network whatever uh, what 10 million now 50 million who knows but um uh, but like that's how many people can potentially, you know, uh, hear that music, and that's amazing. Like that, you know, wasn't possible five years ago. You pretty much created a buzz as an unsigned artist online, um, and then all of a sudden, music industries started coming to you. Um, how did you go about picking your management team and picking a record label? And what advice could you give to those unsigned bands that are relying on MySpace or the internet just to get noticed? Um, well, honestly. Uh, I didn't really do much. I mean, picking my management, it was just really, really organic and easy. I mean, I just, uh, uh, you know, my manager contacted me on MySpace and... Uh, Did you know and, you him know, previously? Or? I didn't know him previously. He just contacted me on MySpace and, and, you know, was really interested in what I was doing and, you know, asked if I wanted, you know, his help in any way. Like, you know, he was, he was doing like some... Uh, uh, he was doing like placements for shows for a little while, so he said, you know, you know, maybe if if, if you're if you're down, I, I'd love to help you with that. And so I was like, yeah, sure. So we kind of started, you know, talking like that, and it, you know, somehow evolved into like you know a full time management gig. And, and I mean, you know, same with our you know our lawyer. Like we were starting to talk to lawyers because we were getting ready to shop it, and uh, we just picked a f you know uh, you know we talked to a bunch of lawyers and we had them all on the line and we were you know trying to pick the best one for this project. I mean, the best one turned out to be the guy that, you know, didn't work with rock. He worked with mainly hip-hop. By the time I talked to him on the phone, he already knew all the lyrics of the album. So it was like, you know, we picked the guy that obviously had, you know, more of a passion for what I did rather than the guy that's, you know, you know he's going he's to get the job done. He's going to get the job done well, but he's not going to be, you know, necessarily thinking in my best interest uh, as, an, you know, as, an, as a creative artist. And so, um, and then, I mean, and the label, same thing. It was just really, really organic. Like, uh... We had, you know, meetings with, you know, every major label, you know, uh, in New York and in, and in Los Angeles, and we ended up picking the indie guy because he just, you know, he gave me a lot more of what I wanted uh, in, in a label situation, and I really appreciated that, so.